Monster Hunter expansions are designed to add to the base game. They bring in new content like monsters, locations, as well as new features, quality of life improvements that can really make the entire game more pleasant to play through, as well as substantial gameplay additions that affect the combat in a major way, for better or worse. In this video, we will be discussing what is, in my opinion, one of the worst gameplay additions. I am talking about Monster Hunter Wild Iceborne's Clutch Claw and how it ruined a perfectly good game. Most times of combat tends to be pretty grounded. You have your weapon, your items, your abilities, and you have to use them to take down large beasts. In the first three games, the combat was like this, with each new entry providing new attacks to every weapon to make them more interesting to use. Most Hunter 4 introduced vertical elements into the mix, where hunters could perform aerial attacks and mount monsters. Generations at its core reused 4's combat, but added 6 hunting styles, which dramatically changed the way you approach the combat. It also added special attacks called Hunter Arts that did a variety of different things. 4 Ultimate was my very first game in the series, and Generations Ultimate was my second. I like the combat of both games, but Generations felt like it was too centralised on gimmicks. They were a lot of fun, but I very much preferred 4's more grounded approach. Upon going back and playing previous entries and later fully replaying 4 Ultimate, I decided that I liked its combat the most out of any game. It's slightly less grounded than, say, Freedom Unite, but I feel like the vertical elements make the fights feel much more dynamic. It still feels realistic and very reliant on my own weapon and abilities. Furthermore, this game added weapon types that I really like and certain attacks to existing weapons that I really enjoy using. Most Hunter World was made largely by the development team that made 4 Ultimate, and its combat feels like an evolution. There are no hunting styles or arts in this game. We still have jump attacks, we have new sliding attacks, Overall, the combat is still nice and grounded, without a reliance on special gimmicks, yet it still has the dynamic verticality seen in 4 Ultimate that adds many layers to each hunt. It's great combat that is slightly let down by a boring cast of monsters. World does have one mechanic that I would argue is kind of a gimmick, a small device called the Slinger. You load it with special ammo and can fire it, causing different effects. You can distract monsters, you can wash mud off certain monsters, you can clear away toxic effluvium, you can load up your flash, sonic and dung bombs for easy access, you can even shoot certain parts of the map and cause them to collapse, such as these crystals that fall and deal heavy damage to whoever is under them. It's an alright mechanic, but it's not something I find myself using after a while. Like near the beginning of the game I'm like, whoa I can make Rathian walk over there, that's so cool, and then it's something I never really use again. Yes, I can wash the mud off Baroth to do extra damage, or I can just hit him and have the mud come off anyway. It does not help that only the sword and shield could use it unsheathed. There's also criticism to be made about how every single armour piece has this ugly appendage that often doesn't blend in or fit very well. That being said, praise should be given to the slinger as something that you don't feel forced to use. I can completely ignore it and play world like it's for ultimate, but people who master it have access to more options in combat. This is something that is very important to keep in mind. The slinger felt optional. Generations various hunting styles could be powerful, but those who wanted the standard combat could just use guild style and in some cases have access to even more combat options than the other styles. Making a gimmick optional means that those who dislike it can just ignore it and still have a good time, but those who like it can reap additional benefits. It's a very difficult balancing act that World achieved with the Slinger. So Icebawn gets announced and they start dropping information. One of the things they announce is that all the weapons can use the Slinger unsheathed, Hooray, great change! Then they announced a new addition, the Clutch Claw, a new expansion of the Slinger that allows you to grapple onto monsters. You can use this to either weaken various body parts and make them take more damage, or you can latch onto their head and unload all your Slinger ammo into it, causing the monster to go careening into a wall. It expands the use of the Slinger greatly, and is even available for people in the base game who purchase Iceborne. Let's cut to the chase. I think the Clutch Claw is a terrible addition that ruined the entire game. Here's why. To clutch onto a part of the monster, you first have to aim and press the right face button. With how fast the monsters move, this can be quite difficult, especially when there's a specific part in mind. For example, sometimes I want to clutch onto Brachydios' head and will end up on his arm. The aiming is also inconsistent, despite the reticle being locked onto one part, 
you'll clutch onto whatever the claw makes contact with. Sometimes I'll clutch onto a monster's head, only for them to suddenly turn around, as I end up on something I didn't intend to. It's quite clunky to use. When you're clutched onto a monster, you will be thrown off and take damage if they perform an attack. And with how fast I spawn monsters move around and attack, this can be pretty common. So until you find a lengthy opening, you'll be dealing less damage than you could. There's also some real inconsistencies here. If Barioth's tail touches me during his hip check, I do not take any damage or get knocked back. But if I'm clutched onto his tail, it's as if the full attack hit me, and there's a lot of cases where this happens. So you have to be quick about tenderizing and finding an opening to perform your clutch claw attack. Each weapon has their own unique attack at varying lengths, and if the monster attacks during them, you will be thrown off. Light weapons like the long sword or sword and shield or light bowgun have quick animations, while the charged blade, great sword, and other heavy weapons are slower. The charged blade attack in particular is annoying because you always end up in axe mode, and combined with the speed of its clutch claw attack, it led to me never using the weapon in this game. This means that light weapons have a clear advantage, being able to quickly tenderize in and out, while the heavy weapon users are stuck with lengthy animations that are more easily interrupted. There's a clear imbalance here that the developers were aware of and had a solution for. Light weapons have to clutch claw attack the same part twice, while heavy weapons can just do it once. Instead of, say, buffing the heavy weapons to be at less of a disadvantage, like giving them faster animations, they instead just nerf the light weapons. With how fast these monsters move, finding multiple opportunities in a short space of time can be very difficult, and with how annoying it is to aim at a part consistently, it makes tenderizing really unfun. Let's discuss another issue, and that's weapon integration. Some weapons have the ability to combo into the clutch claw right after attacks. Take the hammer for instance. After performing charge attacks, they can press the left trigger to instantly clutch onto a monster, attacking while swinging in. It's fun to do, and allows you more opportunities to clutch. The lance has a particularly good counter that combos into the clutch claw, a move so good people missed it when it was absent in the next game. However, with weapons like the longsword, there are no clutch combo attacks. You have to manually stop and aim every time you want to do it, and there's no cool moves to integrate into your combos, which makes finding opportunities rather difficult. It makes the clutch claw feel like an afterthought. I mentioned earlier that it was annoying trying to find opportunities to clutch onto a monster without being thrown off, but if you use the temporal or rocksteady mantles, this will not happen, and you'll be able to clutch and attack freely. The issue here is that both tools are only available in Worlds post-game, so you have to go back to the old content to access them. Another problem is that because the clutch claw is so reliant on them, other tools are made irrelevant. Why bring the elemental mantles or the health booster, when these two in particular are so much more useful? So the designers were aware that clutch clawing and attacking monsters could be quite difficult, and they did implement a mechanic to help us out. This is the clutch claw stagger, or the clagger as fans dubbed it. Monsters will clagger into this position where they face to the side, allowing you to aim at their parts fairly easily. They hold this position for several seconds, and will reset the timer if you clutch onto them. Almost every monster in the game does this, and it completely breaks the flow of combat. For starters, the monster reels backwards so far that any melee combo you are doing won't hit them, so you have to stop. If you are performing a strong multi-hit attack, and the first hit claggers them, then you've just wasted it. The monster is now so far away that you either have to sheath and run up to them, wasting valuable time, or clutch onto them, which is what the game wants you to do. The fight completely halts just so the game can go, Okay, tenderize now. Base world was also updated, so that even if you don't have high spawn and by extension a clutch claw, the monsters will still do this. It's a really jarring addition for sure, not to mention how unnatural it looks. So those are all the major issues with the clutch claw, and I'm sure you're thinking at this point, if I don't like it, then I shouldn't use it. And you would be right. I wasn't too big on the slinger, and I didn't really use it. But the clutch claw is implemented very differently. In the next chapter of the video, I will explain how Iceborn actively punishes you for not using it, and how that ruins the whole game. Now personally, I didn't find World all that difficult. To be honest, I thought Rise was more challenging. The reason for this was that World's monsters tend to die really fast. So Iceborn comes along, the master rank expansion featuring much higher difficulty. They also introduced the Clutch Claw, which allows for you to deal higher damage. This could make the game easier, could it not? Let's do some maths real quick. 
The Chastis Blades show the health of certain monsters in 4 and 4 Ultimate, as well as Rise and Sunbreak. If you're wondering why Rise and Sunbreak are so absurdly high compared to the other game, it's because we have access to stronger and faster abilities in that game, so all that is taken into account. This is also only the solo scaling. 4 Ultimate's health pools are also generally lower than average, but are compensated by faster monster speeds and higher attack power. But I'm getting off topic. If you divide the expansion health by the base game health, you can see that Sunbreak multiplied Rise's health by 2.4, and 4 Ultimate multiplied its base game by 1.8, resulting in the numbers you see now. Rounding up and down respectively, that's roughly an increase of double the health. So let's look at World. These health pools are pretty low across the board, and I kind of attribute World's non-existent difficulty to them. And if we look at Iceborne's health pools, whoa! A pretty massive increase, wouldn't you say? Doing the maths from earlier, this is the biggest increase of all, being over triple world's health. The reason for such an increase is the Clutch Claw. You see, it allows us to deal much more damage to monsters, and the developers probably realised, oh no, the monsters will die fast like they did in world. So they cranked up the monsters health to compensate. Not only this, but they nerfed monster hit zones so that they take even less damage. By this point, I should probably mention the Warbangs. They deal roughly 2% of the monster's total health and damage, they do massive part break damage, and they knock down the monster on top of that. It's free damage everywhere. You can only do it when the monster is not enraged, and this means that if you play optimally, monsters spend half the fight on the floor, and the other half absolutely furious. Do you see why they increase the health so much now? If you actively use the clutch claw the way it's intended, your hunts will last normal lengths. If you refuse to use it though, they can often end up much longer. You see, the tenderizing and the damage dealt through warbangs adds up, and I find that hunts can take over 25 minutes, which was never the case in the base game. I want to remind you all that world was clutch claw free, and you didn't have to use a slinger. If you did, it gave you an advantage but not a huge one. Now, you basically have to use the clutch claw to get the results you used to. I should also mention that the clutch claw is available to use in the base game, and if you do use it, then it basically destroys the monsters since they clearly weren't designed with it in mind. Another problem from this is that because the claw was available in the world from the start, and breaks the game a little bit, people who start playing might get the impression that like the slinger, it's a neat little bonus that they can use occasionally, but overall they can get by just fine without it, and they would be right. But once they hit Iceborne, the tool becomes necessary in order to achieve the same hunt times they could in world. The entire game changes, and because the tool is horrible to use it's for the worst. The armor skill weakness exploit was also nerfed, so that a monster part has to be tenderized for you to receive the full effect. This also applies to the base game, which punishes people who didn't buy Iceborne. I also just hate the effect it has on the fight. When the monster isn't tenderized, you know that every single hit isn't as damaging as it could be. When the monster goes down in every other game, the natural instinct would be to start beating them up. But in Iceborne, you would look around for the tenderized parts, and if there were none, you'd waste the opportunity by tenderizing instead. I'm not a person who speedruns, or cares about getting optimal damage. I don't even make mix sets. The fact of the matter is that it's not fun to be aware that you're not using your full abilities to do maximum damage. But on the other hand, using the mechanic isn't really fun either. And the worst part was, World's combat did not need fixing or changing like this. It was great and probably my favourite combat in the series, since it's an evolution of 4 Ultimates combat. All the game needed was higher difficulty and better monsters, which Iceborne provided. It actually gave weapons some pretty cool additions. The universal ability to use a slinger and shift was good, but some weapons also got useful combos, like the greatsword being able to skip to the true charge slash by firing a slinger burst. That stuff was cool, and it was all that was really needed. Iceborne then proceeded to utterly ruin the combat with the claw, and that honestly just stings. The game was so close to being perfect for me, and then they just messed it up forever. You can't even play the base game without being reminded of the claw, since monsters still do the clagger. It's just permanently tarnished. No other Moss Hunter game received such a huge addition that completely changed the combat like this with the expansion, and it actually made me worried for the future. My biggest hope for Stunbreak was not more monsters or more difficulty. No. My hope was that they wouldn't ruin a perfectly good combat system with a needless addition again. So I've discussed why the Clutch Claw sucked, and how it ruined Iceborne for me. In the next chapter of the video, I am going to discuss the wire bugs, and how they avoided the Clutch Claw's mistakes. 
The Wireberg is a movement and combat tool introduced in Monster Hunter Rise. It's basically a grappling hook that lets you swing from anything, including the air itself. Hunters can also use wirebugs for certain attacks, known as silk binds. In general, they're a huge part of this game, so how do they avoid the problems the Clutch Claw had? Well, the wirebugs are much better integrated into the hunter's movesets. With three different buttons, the hunters can swing up, forwards, or in any direction they desire, and once you get the hang of it, traversing the maps can be really fun. But the wirebugs are also really nicely integrated into the weapons. With the Clutch Claw, you had 14 different weapons all trying to perform one specific action in one specific way, and some were better at it than others. Some even had more options than the rest. With Rise, every weapon has two silk binds at once, and each can be used by pressing the left trigger and the face buttons. Some are used for high damaging attacks, some are used for mobility, some are used to buff your weapon, and some are used for both. These silk binds are custom designed for every weapon, and this makes them fun to use, since they mostly have meaningful effects. They're the spiritual successor of Hunter Arts, essentially. Now here's the second reason, which is related to why the Clutch Claw was such a poor addition. Rise was designed with the wirebugs in mind. The game's locales were designed around them. When designing each weapon, they were also designing their silk bind attacks and how they functioned. Most of all, they could also design the game's difficulty around it, which is why Rise's health pulls were so much higher than Worlds. Earlier, I criticised Iceborne for making the Clutch Claw more or less mandatory. Now, arguably, the wire bugs are mandatory in the same way, where if you don't use them, you're not dealing anywhere near optimal damage, and your hunts will take a lot longer. Yeah, I don't have an issue this time. The reason for this is that the wire bugs are integral to Ryze's identity. They were a part of the game from the very beginning. If somebody doesn't like using them, they'll know that perhaps the game isn't for them. But if they do like them, they'll most likely enjoy the whole game and its expansion. Now, if you recall, I really liked Wild's combat for what it was. It was simply you, your weapon, and your abilities, plus a slinger if you felt like using it. Iceborne changed it by forcing the Clutch Claw on me, and now suddenly the whole game is centred around tenderizing and warbangs in order to deal good damage, thus changing the combat flow massively and for the worse. With Rise, I liked the wirebugs from the beginning, so them feeling mandatory wasn't an issue because I liked using them and I had a good time. If you look at World and Iceborne together as a complete experience, World lies to you by saying you don't actually need the Clutch Claw, only for Iceborne to pull the rug from underneath. Rise is honest to you about the wire bugs from the very beginning. The biggest issues with Rise were the weapon balance, with some being way too strong partly due to their silk binds, and Wyvern riding basically being mandatory. Sunbreak fixed the weapon balance issues with nerfs and buffs where needed, and made Wyvern riding optional. Sunbreak did introduce a new tool that drastically changed the combat in the form of the switch skill swap, but this doesn't change the flow of combat, nor do they literally need to rebalance the entire game around it. To be honest, you don't even need to use it. All it does is allow hunters to switch playstyles and allow for greater combat possibilities. There's no concern about it breaking the base game either, because it only unlocks when you're in master rank. I believe most of the issues with the Clutch Claw are a result of it being introduced in Icebond. If it was designed for World, they could have made it fit better with the rest of the game. They could have integrated it more with weapons, and changed the monster's function to incorporate it better. With an expansion, they could have rebalanced it further. Iceborne's final update doubled the tenderize time from 90 seconds to 180, and introduced a decoration that allowed light weapons to tenderize in one hit. Good additions that slightly fix the mechanic, but are ultimately too little too late. I have zero doubt that if World received another expansion on top of Iceborne, it would have rebalanced the Clutch Claw so that like the Slinger in the base game, it would have been a nice bonus and not something you had to do. The lesson here is that huge mechanics like this should not be introduced in expansions, especially if they change the combat to such a degree that the base game has to be rebalanced to account for them. Furthermore, I don't think the main series team should try these huge experimental additions. They should focus on making raw, grounded combat that's not reliant on gimmicks, while incorporating the best parts of the portable team's experimentation. I say that because it's exactly what World did. The combat is largely grounded, but several of the new weapon attacks are taken right from generations, rebalanced and retooled to work with this combat, and it makes them really fun to play. The next game should have World's combat, but maybe with Ryze's switch skill system, that would be really good. The title of the video is How the Clutch Claw Ruined Iceborne, and so you're probably thinking, did it really make the game bad, this one edition? When playing a Monster Hunter game, for me, the two most important things are 
the quality of the monsters in the game, and how fun the combat is. That's not to say that other things don't matter like the story, pacing or end games, but the main point is that if a game can't pass those two simple checks, then I won't enjoy playing it. Everything else is secondary. In the case of 4 Ultimate, Generations, Portable 3rd, I like the combat and I like the monsters, so those games are good. I like World's combat, but I find the monsters rather boring. There isn't much variety, and a lot of them fight in the exact same way. There's only three that I would consider to be memorable. Now if we look at Iceborne, the monsters are good, with some great returning monsters, and some genuinely cool subspecies of wild monsters that I found boring. The originals are also really creative, but because the act of fighting them is unfun, it tarnishes the whole experience. I enjoy fighting Zenoga, Brute Tigrex, Valkana or Bambaro. I do not enjoy fighting them with the Clutch Claw playing such a huge role, and because combat is such a huge part of Monster Hunter, it does ruin the whole game for me. I like Sunbreak significantly more than Iceborne, but without the Clutch Claw, the situation would be similar to Four and Generations, where I consider the one to be better than the other, just slightly. I still think I'd like Sunbreak more overall, because Iceborne has a lot of problems that Sunbreak doesn't have, but that's better than me just outright disliking the game. The Clutch Claw ruined Monster Hunter World in several ways. It took some of the best combat we'd had in the series, over-centralised it around a poorly implemented gimmick, and therefore changed the entire game for the worse. Some of you might be wondering, Iceborne is a bit old, why make a video now? The answer is that I made a few digs at the Clutch Claw in my underwater combat video, where I compared two bad mechanics with each other. Some commenters were curious as to why it was bad, and I've wanted to talk about this in detail for a while now, particularly why the wire bugs are better. I'm sure some of you might suggest trying out the Iceborne Community Edition mod, since it reportedly does rebalance the Clutch Claw to be something of a bonus, rather than mandatory. At the moment, I'm not really interested, but maybe in the future. That will be all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do you dislike the Clutch Claw? Or better yet, do you actually like it? Let me know why in the comments, because either way I do want to know your thoughts. Remember to like and subscribe, and have a good day.